In this tutorial, we're going to learn more about potential energy. We're going to look at a special case of potential energy called gravitational potential energy. Let's remind ourselves that potential energy is the energy of position, or stored energy. We recall that an object can't have potential energy by itself, as it needs to be part of a system. For example, we considered a block. By itself, it can't have potential energy. But, by adding a spring to the system, we can push the block back against the spring and put it in a position of having potential energy. What if we simply lifted the block up into the air? By lifting it, we're pushing against the force of gravity, much like pushing against the spring. The force of gravity is part of our system, so by lifting against gravity, we're increasing the potential energy of the block. The higher we lift it, the greater the potential energy. Because this potential energy is due to gravity, we often call it gravitational potential energy. Potential energy due to lifting something against gravity. So, let's resort back to our equation for potential energy. EP equals FFD. Now, in this case, for gravitational potential energy, FF is simply the force of gravity, or the weight of the block. And we recall back to how to calculate the weight of an object. Recall that the weight, or FG, also called force of gravity, equals mg, where m is the mass and g is the gravitational constant, 9.8 meters per second squared. And this works anywhere near the surface of the Earth. So, plugging this in for FAV, and we get EP equals MGD. And since the distance, in the case of gravitational potential energy, is always how high you're lifting something, we often replace the D with an H. And that makes our final equation EP equals MGH. Again, m is the mass of the object, g is our gravitational constant, 9.8 meters per second squared, and h is the height you lifted the block. So we really have one main equation for potential energy, Ep equals Fav times d, but we also have a version of this equation that's really handy for questions where we're dealing with gravitational potential energy. And that one is EP equals MGH. For example, if our block had a mass of 10 kilograms and you lifted it from the floor onto a 1.5 meter high shelf, determine the change in potential energy. Because this certainly is a gravitational potential energy problem in that we're lifting against gravity, Let's use our equation EP equals MGH. So first, let's replace all the variables with brackets. 10 kilograms for the mass, 9.8 meters per second squared for G, and the height is 1.5 meters. So we can calculate that out to be 147 joules. We did 147 joules of work to move the block onto the table. And as long as it sits up there on the table, it stores 147 joules of potential energy. Another example. A 0.5 kilogram pendulum is pulled back 20 centimeters so that it is 6 centimeters above its lowest position. What is the pendulum's potential energy at this position? Because this is certainly a gravitational potential energy, we're pushing against gravity, let's use our formula EP equals MGH. And let's replace all the variables with brackets. So, we have 0.5 kilograms for mass, and 9.8 meters per second squared for G, and the height. 
Well, the height in this one isn't totally clear. Remember that we're pushing the pendulum against the force of gravity to increase its potential energy. Just like in work calculations, we have to ensure that the distance we're talking about is the same direction or opposite direction as the force. Thus, it doesn't matter that the distance we pulled the pendulum back involved 20 centimeters. It's the fact that we brought it up 6 centimeters against the force of gravity. It's the vertical direction that matters. So, we'll convert 6 centimeters into meters, moving the decimal over twice, and we can plug in 0 0.06 meters. And now we can calculate. And we get 0 0.29 joules. We did 0 0.29 joules of work to move the pendulum into this position, 6 centimeters vertically above its lowest point. And as long as it's being held up there, it'll store that 0.29 joules of potential energy. If we let it go, the potential energy will start to decrease, and the kinetic energy will increase. In this tutorial, we reminded ourselves that potential energy is the energy of position, or stored energy. We then looked at gravitational potential energy, and we found that simply by lifting something up against the force of gravity increased its gravitational potential energy. Our general equation for potential energy, EP equals F av d, was modified for this special case of gravitational potential energy to be EP equals mgh. So, if we're ever asked to calculate the gravitational potential energy of an object, we do four steps. First, we write down the equation being used, EP equals mgh. Then, we write the equation again, but we replace the variables with brackets. And we put the appropriate numbers into those brackets, ensuring that the values are in standard units, then we can calculate the answer, ensuring that we show our final units of joules.